Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the REC Podcast, brought to you by the REC Toycast. I'm your host, Roman Chavez, and with me as always... Eric Icarus. Eric. What's up? You can find us on the gram at REC Podcast. Mm -hmm. You can follow myself at Roman REC Podcast, and you can follow yourself. Gulag underscore J underscore... Wheel den. Wheel den. Yep. Wheel den. That's good. The gulag. The goulage. Keep talking. Keep talking. <laughs> oh, man. So we've got some interesting stuff that we must talk about today. Mm-hmm. But first, Eric needs to get his freaking sunglasses. Yep. I was you know? uh, not set about. ready. Yeah. It's it, not camera ready. I, well, I mean, you're always camera ready. Oh. You know. Yeah. This, 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 is just the, this is just a sprinkle. The cherry on top <laughs> for the ladies and the gentlemen. Um... <laughs> Dude, we got some more casting news, yeah. which I was pretty excited about. You know, last week we had a She-Hulk casting news, mm-hmm. um, and it sounds like that they have uh, cast Miss Marvel. Oh, uh, yeah? You know, kind of, uh, what was it? La- was it last year's Disney Expo? I think it was just after Comic-Con. They showed the teaser banners for Miss Marvel, um, Moon Knight, yeah. She-Hulk, Blade, um, which I'm still up in the air about whether that's going to be a movie or a, a or series, a, or a, or a series, series yeah. just because of where it was uh, released. You know, they got I believe it's Marsha Hala Ali mm-hmm. to play uh, Blade. So perfect casting. You know, he's a way. he's an Oscar winner, I believe, two time Oscar winner. Definitely, definitely one time, definitely two time. Uh, um, um, you know, nominated, but yeah. I think he won both times. Uh, and so they they cast for Miss Marvel. Mm-hmm. Um, Who's different from Captain Marvel, who used to be Miss Marvel? It gets confusing, kids. Um, and <clears throat> she is actually Marvel's first, I believe. Um, she's not the first openly Muslim, but this is going to be the first time we have an openly like like Muslim superhero on the big screen, right? Or you know, yeah. with the streaming screen, whatever. Mm-hmm. However you want to say it. Um, the actress's name is In or uh, Im Iman uh, Vilani. Um, she's Canadian, okay. but I, I believe her 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 roots are at least uh, uh, steeped in the Middle East in sure. terms of like where her family comes from. Um, I was looking on IMDb yeah. and I I don't see any credits to her, so mm-hmm. I, this is going to be her first work. Wow. Maybe so this movie's like. You've never seen her before. And it's gonna because be you've never seen her before. Yeah, yeah, and 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 maybe I'll I'll, I'll vet that some more. But I mean, as, as far as I could tell, mm-hmm. I didn't recognize her. I believe she's eighteen, and uh, yeah, so it's cool. I'm I'm into that. Getting and this is kind of for me. This is kind of Marvel's bread and bread oh, and butter. Yeah, where they used to like like. The one thing I'm worried about when it comes to the Eternals is that they've got all of these known people. I was getting ready to say. The same way? I was getting ready to say that. Yeah, yeah, because um, yeah. you know they were Marvel was notorious for casting. Unknowns to yes. waning stars, basically, and yeah, I, I feel and it, but now you know as they went on, they kind of got larger stars to be in the movies, but playing like really smaller parts. Yes, very not saying bit parts, yeah. but you know just small parts. They were the sunglasses <clears throat> to the Icarus. Okay, <laughs> you know the Icarus is already there in the MCU film, but then throwing in a Robert Redford, yeah, throwing it, in a Glenn Close, yes, was always good. But yeah. we've got straight up, you know, Angelina yeah. Jolie, Selma Hayek. Um, Kit Harrington. We've got a ton of established people. Right. So I like them kind of going in a new route. And this way, we don't have anything to compare. Right. As, as far as long as I didn't uh, 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 look for her name incorrectly, you know, she's going to have relatively a blank slate. With that's going to come a lot of heat. Oh, yeah. It's going to come a lot of heat because you got you to be good. you got to be good. Gone. But I trust, especially with Feige's people kind of mm-hmm. uh, taking over the, the Marvel television type Division, stuff. Yeah. Um, I, I trust them. Yeah, and, I think it'll be they great, keep, man. Keep I'm excited. I don't know a lot about. Um, is it Miss um, Marvel? Yeah, she Ms. don't Marvel, need no man. She yeah, she yeah, she, yeah, she pays all her own bills. <laughs> okay, okay. The Allie McBeal of yeah, the, exactly. the MCU. <laughs> no, that's also She Hulk. So, oh yeah, that's oh. so. So you see where we're going. Yeah, you see Ooh, I like where this, this is stuff. going, dude. Yes, I agree. I agree. I think it's over. We're a high time for this kind of super. I think we're gonna see, we're gonna see her. Her name is is I was calling her Kamala Khan, but with with uh, Kamala Harris, you know, pronouncing her name. I assume that's how it's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. Is is Kamala sure. Kamala Khan? That's uh, that's um, how um, um, Kelly Thompson pronounced it. So she wrote wrote for it. From Miss Marvel. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so gotcha. that's 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 what I remember her how her Kamala. It. Okay, yeah. um, and it's not Kublai Khan. Um, so you know, I thought it might be, but it's not. Yeah. It's not Kumite, <laughs> which also is something else. Um, I want a Kumite movie. Okay. What are you? I mean, like, just, like a blood, like a blood sport movie? No, I want the real story behind Kumite uh, about Frank Dukes. Okay, you know what that's about, right? I don't. Frank yeah, Dukes is be. a notorious, notorious liar and con man. Okay. So, you know, because they basically... Kids, Bloodsport is a very, very oh, old... Mom Dukes? Ju- <laughs> Mom Dukes? Oh, Mom Dukes. <laughs> um, <laughs> Jean-Claude Van Damme movie from the 80s playing uh, Frank Dukes, who apparently went on this fighting quest in the middle of uh, China, or Beijing. Okay. I think that's where this movie takes place, yeah. Bloodsport. 
And apparently this movie was based on all true events. Uh -huh. Comes out, you know, internet comes around and they turns out this Frank Beats yeah. guy is just full full of crap and and I want the I want a movie based on him conning people. Dude, I think that would hilarious. be a genius movie, man. Dude, back in the day, you yeah, Bill hated to play him. They, oh my gosh. You know how awesome right? that be? Yeah, it'd be really awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah, dude, back in the day, you could just, like, make Mix up a bunch of BS yeah. martial arts. Joe Rogan posts all kind of stuff. He was, uh, I can't remember if he had a guest on or if it was one of his, you know, uh, uh the people in his friend zone, but they were saying that, um, uh, somebody was saying that when they were a kid, uh, they would carry around a karate, like, like, uh, he bought a trophy. Right, right. And it was, like, for, like, a competition. And he, like, carried it around, around, like, his neighborhood, around the kids who, like, ran their mouths a lot. So, like, it got out that he had, like, won a karate tournament yeah. and, like, nobody ever messed with him, even though he did nothing. Yeah. And then Rogan was saying that he he had, he had known this guy, and I'm going to butcher the, this part of the story, but he was saying that he knew this guy. It was a friend of a friend mm -hmm. who uh, had, like, he was like, oh, you know, I'm this, I'm this awesome black belt oh, and this and that. And uh, had That's like good. his buddy drop, uh, him, drop off him off. In the woods. It was, yeah, it was supposed to be like a kumite. Yeah, and it was like, hey, this is a secret thing. I need you to come drop me off. And so his buddy like dropped him off in the woods, and like a couple days later, came back and get him. And he like had this trophy. Yeah, and he's like, oh, I won. But the thing is, like, his friend drops him off in the woods with a duffel. He's like, it, I, and it, yeah, and it clearly had the trophy. Like yes. it was like a trophy shaped duffel bag. Yeah, basically. <laughs> and he's like, I won this in the woods. Yeah, <laughs> dude, it, it, it used to be it used to be so fast and loose with the oh, big lights. time, man. Yeah, I mean, uh, Steven Seagal. Oh yeah, easily the one of the biggest liars. I mean, yeah, he he knows Aikido. He knows Aikido. He's an Aikido but master. But he's not a a swords expert. He doesn't go on CIA op, CIA op no, or, you know. No, no he's a, a sheriff's deputy in Las Vegas or in Louisiana or, or Louisiana. Okay, yeah, Louisiana. Yeah, oh, but God. anyway, yeah. I, that was a huge. Well, oh, we digress. Yeah, we digress. Yeah. We, uh, <laughs> anyway, congratulations to to Eamon Villani. Uh, I cannot wait to, to see the, this, this character awesome. yeah, yeah. Um, to get more. And, and again, just to, like get I that. I don't know new a lot batch. about this character. Just to get that new yeah. batch. She was a uh, uh, scroll. No, it's just, she's not a scroll, but she's a shapeshifter, and I believe her powers come from the from the Terrigen Mists. Oh, okay. It so was she's like a, inhuman ish. She is inhuman ish. It was um, um there's a there was a couple inhuman stories like back to back that were like kind of whack, but one no, of them. No, you were rapping right there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yo, turn my levels up. All right? Turn it up. No, and uh, and I believe she's exposed to Terrigenesis when they try to um. Uh, explode like a terrigenesis bomb because if you're a regular human, mm. terrigenesis is not good for you. Okay. If you're a mutant, it takes your powers to a very, very weird place. Like uh, uh, when uh, Quicksilver lost his powers in right. the House of M, he, uh, you know, he has a daughter with, with Crystal, with the yes. human Crystal, uh -huh. and so he goes to see a uh, um, Black Bolt, and he's like, "Hey, can I be exposed to terrigenesis to get my powers back? Yeah. Like, I need my powers. I need my everything is so slow. Right? Like he was like he's talking, going mad. Yeah, he's going mad from like having to work move at normal paces. Right? And they say, no, you know, it's it's something you know resigned for their people. And he's like, well, my daughter is one of your people. Yeah, and your daughter had, it will experience terror genesis. Right, right. He will not. So he ends up busting in there and fakes it anyway. He ends up like either like smashing some of the crystals and inhaling them, right, or <laughs> or like gets them in his skin. I can't remember. I remember yeah. this. I have this image in my head of it, of like the crystals like being in his chest. Right, right. Um, and it gives him like weird time powers. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it it could have been interesting. The story was meh. Um, uh, but ended up crossing over in your book, uh, uh, X Factor Investigations. Oh, oh. yeah. Yeah, awesome. it, was, it was interesting awesome. there because he was like, "Oh, I'm going to take this with me and I'm going to help other mutants." Oh, yeah. Oh, was, Pietro. Yeah, I know. Just, just always his heart, just like his dad. Yep. His heart's in the right place. Right. He's just, yeah. He, he just, you he, he can't yeah, do that. Come on, man. Um, so I believe she was ex exposed to that ter uh, terrigenesis bomb in New right. York. If I'm remembering correctly, the the comments may may may, may uh, correct me, but I believe that that that's her uh, sure. story. And it's interesting to get a new again, get a new character. Yeah. Her favorite superhero was was Miss Marvel. So then when Carol becomes Captain Marvel, she's like, oh, I can take this. I can Make take this mantle. Marker. Yeah, yeah. So um, what yeah. happens when she gets married though? Well, then she's she's Mrs. Marvel. Miss, Miss yeah, Marvel? yeah, Mrs. Marvel. And and you know, it's a progressive day, so maybe he takes her last name. Sure. So then he's Mr. Marvel, and, and, and we're all good. Ooh, we're all good. I like it. Um, can I be Mr. Marvel? I. I mean, Esquire, uh, yeah, <laughs> the third. <laughs> yeah, when they were naming uh, Archangel, I mean, they, oh, yeah. you know, they were really laid. They, it on. they, they yeah, got that the name, really the rich name, on. perfect. War, Warren Worthington the <laughs> third. Yeah, um, we do have some more bad news for movies, we and do? yes, in our in our world where we just like want to go watch something. Granted, since theaters have been open, I haven't gotten to watch anything. Sure, but there's not much new. 
And it looks like there's not going to be as much new coming up as we were hoping. <sighs> um, we talked about last time how uh, uh, James Bond had moved out of November and is now going to be, I believe, April of next year. Uh, remember when that Dune trailer came out a few weeks ago? And we yes. were like, oh my oh, gosh, yeah, it's going to come out this it. year? Yeah, yeah, we got hyped for it. Well, now they're moving it. Yeah, it, it's moving uh, until next year. Um, it, it makes sense. Uh, it was going to be competing with itself. I thought Disney was doing Dune, but I guess it's Warner Brothers that mm-hmm. is doing Dune. And r- as of this recording, Wonder Woman has not moved. And Dune and, and Wonder Woman, I believe, are going to come out very close to each other. Right. So maybe they're just moving Dune away to, to let Wonder Woman shine. Sure. But with the announcement of Cineworld slash Regal Theaters closing mm-hmm. uh, operations for like 600-something locations right, worldwide... Right. Um, it sounds like it's just going to be a temporary shutdown, but they are just... It seems like Cineworld is backing out of uh, 2020 altogether. Oh, um, other big chains uh, ha- had said that they're going to stay open, right. so we'll see what happens there. But I, I can't imagine a world in which Wonder Woman comes out this year. I, I don't see it either. I, I I even kind of read somewhere that... from a, I read it on a pretty reliable source that they might even put it on streaming, which me and you have discussed that they might do that with Black Widow. That would be... That Disney would be, was thinking about doing that. Yeah, and I'm, glad, I'm glad that Disney uh, opted out of that. Yeah, me too. Um, and I think that you're going to do the same thing. It, it It's hard for me to say, uh, to try to read the tea leaves when it comes to DC, because normally right. they, just, they just make the bad choice. So the bad choice would be to put it on VOD. Right, right. So uh, I guess that that could happen. But they've got so much money sunk into that, so much sunk cost. You know, this movie's been done for, again, we've talked about this at great lengths, for several years. Oh, yeah, yeah. And this was done, you know, before we had to wear masks and the air was yeah. poison. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know? So it's not it's not out of the realm uh, of possibilities. It's just, it moves it moves the timeline. It moves everything around. And, you know, you're just, you're not going to get, with theaters being at 50% occupancy, right. you're not going to get the money you want. No. There's no way that this thing even competes. And the thing is, it could compete. Yeah, just like one, sure. Just like Black Widow. Yep. They can compete. So you got to give them the chance. It's just, man, let some other stuff like Warner Brothers. You got a ton of crappy properties. You got a ton of uh, horror things that should be coming out this month. You guys should be releasing really cool things from your catalog to movie theaters because they're gonna limp along. Yeah, and, yeah. And you're never going to make. I, I'm gonna say it right now, at least for the next ten years, you're not going to make a billion dollar movie on streaming. It's not no, going it's to not happen. happen. No, you're not going to make a no. billion dollars because because the the the, the rights for the the thing with piracy is, is yeah, just yeah. too it's yeah too, it's just too it's easy there. It's yes. just too easy, and I think mm-hmm. that that's why they're they're backing out of their video on demand thing. Right, right. Because and then if I pay thirty bucks for a movie. I'm inviting all of my friends. Yeah, yeah, come watch it. Yeah, we're gonna have a movie Viewing night, a viewing party. Yeah, we're gonna have a, we're gonna have a viewing party. Yeah, that's what it'll become. So it's just gonna keep chopping away at that. If you guys want to make Avengers level money, you gotta be able to do Avengers level stuff. You have to say, okay, we gotta eat the cost, and we just gotta release it in the theaters when we can. Right. And like I said, they haven't moved Wonder Woman, but it sounds like they're going to Ugh. because I don't know if you saw they moved the Batman already. Batman was supposed to come out in 2021. They moved it to 2022. Again, all of the bad ideas, dude. Like we're 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 hyphy for this, man. Yeah. And the fact that we're we're gonna forget about it, and they'll release a better trailer <laughs> next year. It's going to happen. But why move out? Why move that far out? You're right, right, right. Why move Batman that far out and not mention anything about Wonder Woman right now? Sure. I, that's I don't know. that's what scares me. Yeah. Is that if they're you know, it's it's the opposite of you know. No news is good news. Mm-hmm. With this, it's like I feel like they're just going to... They kind of want us to forget about it. So they I can just they quietly do. put it on VOD wow. and then we can have a little outrage about it. I mean, it's like they, they already got the Snyder Cut coming out on this. Yeah. And they might have like, well, why don't we just put Wonder Woman on there too, you know? Yeah. We'll get two big things that people are very excited about. What, I mean, think about it. Yeah, It kind of does make sense. Like if you... People streaming Snyder Cut and Wonder Woman... Mm-hmm. You know, within two weeks of each other. I mean, that would be that would be one of the biggest apps, or yeah. what, would, what would you even call that? HBO uh, Max. Yeah, HBO Max streaming yeah, service. Be, yeah, streaming service. Yeah, I could see that just breaking breaking the stream. It would be <laughs> crossing the streams, bro. <laughs> Never cross them. It. Yeah, I just said you're not gonna get you're not gonna get the money. You want. No, you're not. You know, no. Wonder Woman legitimately could be an eight hundred million dollar movie. Sure, legitimately. Yeah, because like, the first one made that. Maybe yeah, made it well, and people are just as are more excited for this now. They weren't as excited for the first. one. I would one. say that people who enjoyed Wonder Woman, the first one, are very, very, very excited for this. Yes, the casual viewer. Mm-hmm. 
does probably forgot about it. Yeah. So I really think the numbers on this are going to hurt anyway because they kept pushing it yeah. back and back and back. Part of me wonders if they're like, hey, let's move Batman, let's probably move Wonder Woman, and let's try to figure out a way to get Robert Pattinson's Batman into this into this world. Right. Because their idea... Remember, this idea of like having two DC universes, I believe this is like with the old regime. Right, you know right. that they fired all those people from DC Entertainment and all those things, the people who were consulting for this type of stuff. So maybe there is going to be a massive left turn sure. coming. Yeah. And, you know, they have the perfect excuse right now. Yeah. You know? Uh, somebody was asking me, like, why Why do they keep moving the, these movies? Why, why this? Why that? Like, what's the point? You're going to make money. Yeah. Like I said, you're not going to make the money that you want. And the thing is that, and I think people don't realize, very few people are filming anything right now. Right. So the longer we're here in these times where people can't, you can't have, you know, film sets have hundreds of people on them. Oh, yeah. So until they can start filming things, like, they're going to get backed up. Like, they could have, like, a really good, like, year of product. Remember when the writer strike happened? Yeah. And then, you know, they were on strike for, you know, several months. It, it, you know, it wasn't a full year, but it was a while. All the shows got messed up, and then like a couple of years later, you started seeing like this really whack like stuff. It was like, oh, this is what they were filming during the writer's strike, <laughs> right. where they didn't have you know what they needed. There was just like some weird things that weren't totally, very strong totally. and, and stuff like that. Like we could run into that, and I think that's what they're worried about. If they were able to film things right now, I do think that things would still be pushed, but not as drastic. Sure. And yeah, they just don't want to not be able to put anything out. I right, think they'd right. rather be like, hey, we already have a year's worth of content that we haven't been able to release. Like, let's catch our breath. Like, we're already sunk in this money. Yeah. Let's just catch our breath. We'll release this stuff in a way that allows us to kind of feel some some stress relief. Sure. I can see that. Again, I can argue both points. Yeah, of course. Um, but then, man, again, like, there's no reason movie theaters aren't playing everything that that Disney and Warner Brothers have to offer. I know. The, the, the theater industry should just be able to say, hey, this week I need these three movies. Right, right. Okay, cool. You guys yeah, take these boom. because all yep. of those movies have already made their nut. They've already, oh, yeah. they've already. They, so anything now is just cherry. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It, 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 it drives me nuts. And then, you know, the movies you're going to be requesting to have so much rewatch value. Yeah. You know, who wouldn't want to go see the Dark Knight again? Oh yeah, in the theater. And, and the Dark Knight is one of the movies that has been shown up. Oh, okay. uh, they have done Dark Knight, and I believe they've done Dark Knight Rises. I don't oh, wow. know if they've done uh, Batman, Begins? I've seen Batman Begins. Interesting. Um, many companies are doing this uh, this type of private. Uh, screening type event and mm. people are like renting out theaters oh, yeah. and there's a list of movies that you can that you can choose from and it's relatively inexpensive it's like, oh wow yeah it's like 50 bucks or 100 bucks to, to rent out an entire theater oh my god so you know might be the way to go for some people i mean I, I mean that's good for uh what, cinephiles yeah it's cinephiles, dangerous yeah because yeah. yeah, it's got the cinephiles in there oh uh, yeah i've been i've been Am seeing I getting confused with some uh yeah you're getting confused with camp um <laughs> What do you think that this is going to do? We already know that they moved Black Widow. Yes. Um, there are some articles that are talking about how, you know, time, you know, the, the they had planned for Black Widow to come out when it came out because um, it was kind of in this dead time after uh, Phase 3 had ended, after Spider-Man, you know, Far right. From Home, and we don't, uh, we have something Spider-Man Far From Home to talk, oh, about, nice. uh, to talk about too, so remind me after this. Uh, so the plan was kind of like, okay, this is going to be a cool down, but we're still going to, you know, knowing Marvel, we're still, still going to blow, it. yeah, we're still going to blow your mind, yeah, yeah. but this isn't going to advance our major plot sure. like things normally can, but there's still going to be some gems. And honestly, I think that the longer that we wait, I think some things are going to leak and I, I bet you oh, there's yeah. going to be some crazy surprises. Oh yeah. That we're going to get privy to and we're going to be like, oh man, I wish I would have been surprised at the theater. <laughs> Everything has moved up in, in the, or moved back in the timeline and I'm curious about do who loses do do some people lose faith? Do they do we lose some people? Like if if Black Widow then is the first Marvel movie to come out after you know two years, you know whatever it's going to be, uh, do we? Oh man, I don't know. Do they have to get momentum again? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Big time. <laughs> you, okay. You, you think you think that no, the momentum's no completely question. gone? Okay. I would say not completely gone, but the the wind in the sails is, is drastically diminished. Sure. They are not going to be going full steam. Okay. No. Um, <clears throat> just with the world the way it is now. Yeah. People having to worry about things a little bit more. You know. Yeah. More real problems and. The world we had before, you know, people could get hyped about this because they didn't have a lot of life issues in their way. And, you know, the more problems you have, that stuff just goes by the wayside. Yeah. Like, oh, crap. Like, they, we did have a Black Widow movie coming out. Mm -hmm. And there is an argument that Warner Brothers and, D and Disney can make. Like, hey, if we want to get people back into the movie theaters, 
they've got to come watch Wonder Woman and Black Widow. Like, we're going to have this big stuff to lure people back. Right. And if they're releasing it now when nobody's go- when when very few people are going, and really not their fault, they just can't get into the movie. Sure. Um, you know, there is there is an argument to be made for that. Absolutely. Like, I get it. Like, hey, yeah. but when, when we are ready to go full tilt, well, you guys are going to have so much content. Oh yeah, you're gonna be. Yeah, you, you, you're gonna you're gonna want to break. Like yeah. that's gonna be that's gonna be pretty crazy. Too. I would say this as being a cure for the uh, comic book fatigue. Yeah, in a way, because mm-hmm. you know we haven't had a had a movie in over a year. Yeah, a Marvel movie. So um, I think people are getting like I, I could argue the other side. You know. The ravenous fans are getting more and yeah. more ravenous and mm-hmm. notched up, but casual yeah. fans are like, eh, eh. you know, going hard for ten years, eleven years. It's good to, uh, again, th- you know, we talked about how how COVID shutting things down was like a good reset for some people. Sure. This is going to be a good reset for the for the for the, for the comic book fan, like you're saying, for the mm-hmm. comic book fatigue. I think that. And it might even work. God dang it, it's gonna work out to their benefit, isn't it? It's just gonna be like this new thing, like like one of these, like Wonder Woman or or Black Widow is gonna yeah. be a billion dollar movie, and it wouldn't maybe not normally would have been. Right, right. You know, it's it's going to be. And that's interesting. You know, the more I talk it out with yeah, you, the, the more, more we walk it around, sure. it makes some sense. Yeah, it, it stinks because I just want it. Yeah, yeah me too. Uh, but yeah, it's gonna be. I mean, it's the anticipation. Yeah, yeah, the. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, taking us all the way to the edge, you know, <laughs> just taking us to the edge. Um, you hadn't texted me about this, and I forgot to text you about it. Yes. And I, I think we're gonna we're gonna get a reaction here on the show, guys. Did you see that Jamie Fox is coming back for the third Spider Man movie as Electro? I got nothing. What does this mean? Yeah, what does it mean? But can you get a cool character? <laughs> we need Electro. Do we? I like Max Dillon. I, uh, I, I think that the character visually is... I, For the old school Ditko costumes, Electro's costume is one of my favorites. It is amazing. I love Electro's costume. Okay. We did not get that. We didn't. It's just... It's this crazy thing where they announced this, okay? Uh-huh. Um, and... You know, it's like, oh, you've already played Electro. Like, what is it? Like, are we mm. tying in these universe? Right. I think we're leaning... And this is an internet thing, too. Yeah. We're leaning more and more towards this multiverse thing. The Spider Verse nonsense. I really think Which is not nonsense. Yeah. Well, amazingness. It's is nonsense, what it is. but it's awesome. Yeah. And always, again, we've talked about this low key, one of our favorite types of stories. The Spider Wars mm-hmm. from the Spider Man yep. animated mm-hmm. series was the first time I ever saw anything like this. Absolutely. And it blew my mind. It Me was too. such an amazing series. We may have to break it down on the show, especially when we get when we get closer. But this allows us to get to Sinister Six much quicker. That's the point. This allows us to um, maybe Maybe Jamie Foxx's Max Dillon is always Electro. Sure. So in our world, he's not the the, yeah, the janitor, the sniveling, nerd. yeah. Because yeah. that that just didn't work. And it wasn't that Jamie Fox like Jamie Foxx was fine. fine. Yeah. yeah, he played it fine. Yeah, if we're talking about his act, yeah, just the character was bad. Yeah. He did really well with what he had. Yeah, sure. But you know, the guy was, you know, I, I felt bad for the guy in, in you know the, uh, the, the Max Dillon that they had, mm-hmm. and they you know he felt like he was he he might have been you know uh, um, on the spectrum. Sure. And, you know it's. I don't want to root for Spider Man to beat up on that guy. <laughs> you see well, what I'm I feel like the Eels fixed his, uh, his spectrum. <laughs> maybe he maybe. got really focused. Yes, and it fixed his teeth. Yeah, there's. Oh God, I love Electro. I mean, I've got the first Electro action figure. You know, right? Oh, you there. do. Yeah, I yeah. Mean, it's I'm looking at it's him. yeah, and it's rare and, and awesome. And I'm not showing you guys. Not mm-hmm. yet. Yeah, mm-hmm. this is a tease. Now. Um, it's it's going to be interesting because yeah it's going to get us so who do we need for this who, who's your sinister six team I'll go first since I just sprang this on you I want Electro I want uh, Craven okay um, which I think we can get to and Carl Urban is still on my in my head right oh, now yeah, awesome. um, we we have uh, Scorpion uh, okay from 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 uh, Homecoming yes um, Max again another Max Gorgon right Mac Mac G- Gargan. 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 Mac okay, Gargan okay gotcha yeah. yeah it's okay it's okay. <laughs> You were close. You were close. Like, something like that. Um, we have Vulture. Okay. We still have a Shocker. Yes, we do. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think who the who the fifth one would be. Who we need would... Rhino. We need a muscle. Oh, we do. Need... Yeah, you're right. We need we, a muscle. We, we need a, we need the muscle. So or I'd do, say Rhino. Or do we? Hold on, my head, my head, my my mind's working. Or do we go Juggernaut? <sighs> he does have ties to Spidey. Yeah, like like one of the few X characters that has several. Mm-hmm. Spider-Man appearances yep. and pretty like 
several in the sense of like six, but they're all kind of legit. And everybody kind of knows them. We all kind of no. dig the Spider-Man yeah. versus Juggernaut. Juggernaut yeah. And, and you know what? That's crazy. Your Rhino thing makes mm. way more sense for this. But I mean, if we're trying to start folding in these these uh, mutants, sure. or you know, you know, not that that Kane is a mutant, but but the X universe. Yeah, yeah. It would be an interesting thing that I can see them pulling off. But yes, I would prefer Rhino, a very sure. traditional Sinister Six. Yeah. Um, what would you do if uh, uh, Paul Giamatti's like, hey, I'm coming back as Rhino in the suit. <laughs> yeah, see, I didn't like that suit. I didn't. I don't like the mech suit at all. I don't either. Um, it, it, they did an interesting version of it in the Ultimate Spider-Man. Yes, yes. Where it was uh -huh. a little, it was more mech-y, but it wasn't like a full-on, I'm a dude in a robot. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, Shape, you look like a power. You're like a Power Ranger. Yes, kinda, this you know? was more uh, more Iron Monger than Power, yeah, which Ranger. I'm down with. Yeah, that would make kind of sense because if yeah. it takes place in this MCU, they mm -hmm. would they would kind of like Vulture. Yeah, getting their hands on uh, yeah that's uh, Stark Tech yeah, exactly. You know, that would make more exactly. sense. Yeah. You know, Stark Tech, Hammer Tech. Let's use yeah. these um, um, rocks on. Yeah, like, let's use all of these kind of side hustles. Yeah. That, that are going on totally and and bring them together. And it's uh, just more universe building at this point. Because I'm always, and I don't know if there's been a version of the Sinister Six where Venom has been a part of it, but no. I'm, I'm vehemently against that. No, I, I am way against I, it. He wouldn't do it. I don't like the team aspect when no. it comes to Venom. Mm -hmm. No. Um, and, and the only reason I bring it up is because I can see Sony being like, hey, you guys Come need on. to bring Eddie Brock yeah. in. You guys need Good to, mind. yeah. We need him in there. I, because, I mean, there. This has got to be some type of Sony BS to, oh, put, to yeah. put Jamie Foxx in. Yeah, like, but yeah, Jamie Foxx has got the star power. He wasn't the reason that, that it was bad. Right. Um, and I'm totally down to see that again. I, I am, but I, I just don't want to see Blue, yeah. Jamie Foxx. I mean, yeah. give him the suit. Yeah. I, I kind of want, you know, not super traditional, make it super based off of it. I'm cool with it, yeah. you know. Because uh, I don't know how well that would translate. Yeah, the the stuff like that. But they have done the versions where it's kind of like a smooth, like bald cap. Yeah, totally. And uh, but I like that green and yellow. Mm -hmm. uh, I like the lightning bolts. I'd like to see something more akin to that. Um, yeah, I, I like that. I, I like the the team we got here. I was gonna say Doc Ock. Yeah, Doc, but I, Doc I, Ock he's just, I feel like he's just. His, I think he needs to be his own villain. I do too. Yeah, I don't want him introduced in a team movie. Me either. Yeah, I I'm fine he's... with Jamie Foxx coming in on yeah. a team movie because we already kind of are familiar. Yeah, we already with, know with the character is. a bit. Yeah. So, um, and I mean, let's give credit where credits due. That that the, there's a lot of cool scenes in the Amazing Spider-Man too, um, when he's you know uh, uh, flipping around and like slow mo with the stairs. Yeah. And the electricity is like coming through. Um, it's just that that look to him just didn't work. And then the methed out Green Goblin. Yeah. The, oh gosh. <laughs> Some of that. Yeah, I know. I'm surprised that they haven't given us any goblins. Goblins. So uh, I'm good with it. Believe I'm good me. with it, but I want it eventually, and I want um, McConaughey to play oh Norman Osborn. God, I want that. that. Be great. Be oh amazing. my God, that would be great. We'd have to find a really strong Harry Osborn to his to yeah, his Norman yeah, too. Definitely. Um, but we're kind of getting out of. We need to get it in high school, though. We need to see Harry in high school. Oh, for sure. Because we haven't even seen Harry Osborn, have we? No. No. Interesting. No Harry. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, I, I get it. It's been done to death. It's been it has, death. but I, I want to see the MCU do it. I do too. You know, um, if it's done to death, it's it. The reason it's done to death is because it, it it's not it's not resonating anymore, mm -hmm. so it's dead. Yes, MCU, do it. Give me get revive it for me. I'm still waiting for them to pull the trigger on Uncle Ben. I mean, I'm like I'm like you. I'm I'm glad they haven't gone there. Mm -hmm. Eventually, though, I'd like to see it. Well, their no. take on it. Their take on it. The one thing we know is that they always pull the trigger on Uncle Ben. <laughs> <laughs> Um, there's a story that you are interested in and you didn't know about it I didn't until before the five, show. About 10 minutes ago. And guys, he is way too giddy about this. I'm not, I, no, no, I'm not giddy. Okay. All right. I'll let him explain himself. But I was telling our, our, our Mr. Icarus here about freaking somebody sucker punched Rick Moranis on the streets the other day. That's not cool. That's not cool. You the know, streets in New York, right? The streets in New York, man. You know, it's, it's hard out there. It's hard out there on the streets. Um, if you guys haven't seen the video, it's terrible. Rick Moran's just like walking his dog and some dude cold cocks him. Like out of nowhere, just keeps walking. Yep. And Chris Evans is none too pleased about yeah, Cap it. Mr. And, Captain and, America himself. Yeah. I just, I want this guy to, they're still looking for him as far as I know. Oh, really? Yeah, they, they have a really good close-up picture, but again, mask, you know, hoodie. Oh, so yeah, yeah. It, it's hard. It's hard to, uh, uh, it's going to be hard to find him, but... Uh, maybe enough people like Rick Moranis that this guy, you know, gets served Because he's a up. good dude. Yeah, I yeah, mean, he's a, de a very decent guy when well, it comes people to Hollywood People don't standards. know. He, yeah. he quit Hollywood because yeah. his wife passed away yeah. from cancer and to, to take care of his... He wanted to raise his children. Yeah. So he... Because I, I guess he was getting so many movie roles. Yeah. 
turn them all down. And even Bill Murray was like, yeah, we were going to, you know, he, he was a big out, reason yeah. for the Ghostbusters and well, we couldn't. Bill Murray, no, Bill Murray is the problem that Rick Moranis said he would come back. Bill Murray was the, yeah. Oh, I think yeah. this was like right around when, cause they were talking, yeah. then his wife passed away. Uh, and oh, then, then, then he, gotcha, then he, gotcha. you know, was like, oh, yeah, I he had do done this, a, a you know? few like voice acting roles, you know, stuff like that. But yeah, the guy just stepped away from Hollywood well, to, to be home for his family. For sure. And his kids are grown now. And I guess he, um, did sign on for for like a, a new Honey I Shrunk the whatever. Yeah, I I, I, I that's legit. Like Honey I Shrunk the Kids was so good. Right. Yeah, and then the other one the blew honey, up the kids. Uh, yeah, Honey I Honey I blew up the baby. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that's why he got punched. <laughs> oh Jesus Christ! Honey. I mean, I don't uh, know what would you call the new Honey movie? Shrinkage? I mean, oh gosh. Yeah, I don't know. I, it's not something that I'm yeah. like clamoring for, but I, I, mean, I would I, like to I see would Rick like to Miranda watch again. it. I mean. You imagine we were kids when that came out. It was amazing. I want to see kids see something yes. like that because it was it's such to a cool that, movie to see that. And, and but it would that. be just CGI, blue screen garbage. Yeah, and that movie was all practical. Dude. Yeah, uh, but you know this. It's and our boy Matt Fewer in the first oh one. Oh my God, Matt Fewer! Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's right. Matt I wonder Fewer. what he's got to say about this. <laughs> Yeah, he, you know, I know he's pissed. Right? <laughs> no man, but it's it's, sad. it's rough. Yeah, it's you know, just like why. Like, why do it? Well, you were saying uh, that, that you read something interesting. Yeah, I, there, there's this game going around called the knockout game, and it's just basically people walk by and just tag you. Yeah. Like, you just walk, well, you, basically just what happened. I mean, yeah. you know, go watch the video. Yeah, yeah it's seen brutal. It. Um, but that, that's it, basically what it is. You just walk by and punch people in the face. Yeah. And, I mean, he dropped them. Yeah. I mean, the guy is, what, yeah. five, six, and 67 years old. Yeah. I mean, the, uh, come on. If you're going to sucker punch someone, make it a young person. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. It's, it's ridiculous. you're going to kill them. Oh, yeah. He could have oh, yeah. hit his head on, and then done. Yeah. You're done. It would have been terrible. Yeah, apparently he took himself to the hospital and then went and filed a police report. And, wow. You know, like, you know, he, he yeah, it, it drives me nuts. Rick Moranis is definitely one of those guys who can have a renaissance in his career. Oh, yeah, like, people uh, love him, dude. Like, remember when Steve Martin in, like, the mid-2000s was, like, in a crap load of movies yeah he just like st- and i mean those movies like cheaper by the dozen yep. um bringing down bringing the down the house which was kind of funny it, it was it was worth a watch sure like if, if you if you got dragged <laughs> to it if you got dragged to it it wasn't the worst thing to see and i'm drinking that haterade man i'm not drinking that haterade no that's what know? he says in the movie oh okay <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't even remember that. Your boy, your boy. I'm from the though. hood and misunderstood. That's what he said. Oh, it was that traumatic. It's fairly traumatic, but it wasn't. It could have been way worse. It could have been. It could have been way worse. Abysmal. But it, it made a lot of money. It did. It made a ton. God, it cheaper did. by the dozen. That made a ton of money. Yeah. And like, if it, Superman's just, in that, right? Yeah, yeah. Tom Tom Welling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in, <laughs> infinitely hot Superman. Yeah. I love Tom Welling. Me too. Smallville was Arguably so good. the best Superman origin story on uh, hands on, down on, on the I, screen. On I, either screen. I accept Smallville as canon. It is. Nice. It is. It is. I, I, I think I'm that down with that. I'm, I, at least at least the stuff with the Kents makes so sure. much sense. It gets a little weird when they have that like weird uh, Native American tribe. That, oh like, yeah. Uh, that like <laughs> was visited by the Kryptonians. It was weird, but I still like. I it. mean, it, that's kind of based off of like uh, the Anunnaki. Sure. Yeah. So I, I get where they're going with yeah, it. But I love it, sushi. it does. It does. <laughs> <it's> <laughs> The sashimi tribes. The sashimi tribes. <laughs> um, yeah, I. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, I hope I hope Rick Moranis all right. And I mean, if you're yeah. the one who did it, and you listen to the show. Yeah, Captain America's coming for you. Yeah. Could you imagine? I'm coming for you. Oh gosh, and hell's coming with me. Oh my gosh. That, I mean, that's you terrifying. Have to punch Mick, Rick Moranis and walk off like a hooser. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, it hurts so much. It hurts so much. <laughs> Kids, that is our show. We're going to leave on that. I'm going to leave you guys with that bitter, sour taste in your mouth from your boy Eric, all right? <laughs> with the exception of that, if you like what we're doing, please hit that subscribe button. Uh, leave us some, some comments. Let us know what you think mm-hmm. of the show. Uh, tell people about it. Um, what do you think about all these movies moving? What yeah, do you yeah. think about the casting of Miss Marvel? We would like to talk with you. Totally. Um, check us out, again, on Instagram, at REC Podcast. You can go check out the REC Comics page Mm -hmm. uh where we're selling comics we're selling toys we're selling statues we're putting up new stuff every sunday uh check it out let's make some deals let's uh let's uh let's make some money all right yeah yeah yeah. uh eric do you have any final thoughts for us today you know i'm just i think we need to get through this it's been a crazy year man we we, black panther's gone yep rick moranis getting punched in the face what's this world coming to yeah i'm over it i know it's it's and i I can't even go escape yeah for two hours it's rough you know, it's rough. It's <laughs> this rough. Is, this is the height of insanity right here. I know. And, and as we recorded today, you know, Eddie Van Halen passed away. Yes. Oh, yeah. I was going to say big ups to that. Big ups and pour one out for Eddie Van Halen. It's not a music podcast, but we can uh, talk respect. about mad respect, influence there, 
RIP to the great uh, Eddie Van Halen. Kids, thank you so much for watching. I have been your host, Roman Chavez. I'm still Eric Icarus. And we will catch you on the next podcast.